video blogging. I've been meaning to write a little more extensively about the idea of risk versus danger that comes from Erwin Lacour and uh, MoveNet. And we use it a lot in MoveNet training and you can apply it to move, any movement in general and learning physical skills. Uh, and now that I have written somewhat about the idea of barbell strategies from Anti-Fragile, uh, which you can find there on the, there on the blog, uh, I want to combine the two a bit. So first let's talk about risk versus danger because that's the kind of the theoretical concept and then we have barbell strategies which are how we apply the concept to um, make sure we're training safely but still uh, growing and learning as much as we can while staying safe. Uh, so we have risk on one hand which is in many ways you could say it's basically the percent chance or the odds that you're going to fail a given technique. So if I'm here balancing across this guy in a catwalk, the odds that I just fall off any given moment is my risk. Uh, on the other hand, we have danger. Danger is what happens when I fail a technique. Um, so in this case, uh, or danger is what happens and what the consequence, physical consequences are. So in this case, uh, I have a two foot drop on one side and mulch on the other one. So when I come up here and I crawl across and I fall off, maybe not that gracefully, but when I fall off, the danger is really, really low. It's very unlikely that I'm gonna get hurt in any kind of way except maybe like scraping something. No big deal. Uh, on the other hand, we have this spot over here with a very similar obstacle, but a completely different danger. Let's look at it real quick. So we have this nice, nice little wall, goes all the way across, but if you look down, like so, that's a good two, maybe three story drop. So putting the camera back somewhere good, right here. So that, on the other hand, is very high danger. If I were to mess up at any point and fall, I at least have my legs broken, um, possibly worse. So the odds of me being able to train the next day, very, very low. Uh, so the idea is we have, we have this kind of combination where we want to avoid danger when there's high risk. Um, yeah, when there's high risk. And then uh, when there's low risk, we can generally take more, more, uh, be in more dangerous situations. Anyhow, uh, with that idea in mind, we can take barbell strategies and be a little more explicit about how we do this. So the idea of a barbell strategy is that we have the stuff, in this case, that's, uh, that's high risk and low danger. So the odds of us getting injured are very low on one side. And we have, on the other side, we have the low, rit, the low risk but high danger situations. And in between, there's a lot of stuff we want to generally avoid. Specifically, in a situation where it's medium risk and medium danger. So, you know, maybe it's like a 50, 60% chance you're going to make a, make a technique. But it's also a 50 or 60% chance that you're going to ram your knee into a wall and possibly uh, shatter the patella or something. Which is not life-ending or um, might take a couple months to heal, but not horrible. Uh, but pretty bad. So we don't want to be in those situations very often. Uh, also, we have the situation where high danger and high risk, which is like me trying to do a gap jump across that uh, ravine, I'm gonna call it a ravine here, uh, where it's not even gonna happen, just almost no chance. So I'm basically just gonna end up breaking every bone in my body. Not a good idea. And uh, so we have that kind of middle ground where we don't, we want to avoid the medium, medium, and the high and high danger risk combos. And we want to basically either stay and do stuff that is high risk, and so that's where the, most of the learning happens. We build the uh, we build our skill, our competence at, at physical skills when taking high risk and having low danger, so we can perform the technique accurately. Now, once we've gotten that, once we've gotten that, then we start to go towards the low risk, high danger situations, where we take our now very well refined skill, like say jumping and apply it to a more difficult situation, whether that's having a more precise landing zone, having a bit of a uh, drop on one side so you have to be, uh, so you, the, you can't fail, basically, or other situations where maybe it's at an angle or there's some fr there's a little bit less friction so there's a chance of slippage if you don't land it well, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But in general, we have, we have on one side, we have the physical skill refinement where we build our ability to do the stuff well and then we have on the other side, taking our very well-refined skills and applying them in situations where it's not, it might be a little more dangerous, but the odds of us actually failing are still very low. Um, and 
as a note, as you increase the danger, so if I'm doing something where if I screw up, uh, I'm probably going to die, even with like a 5% chance, uh, you should do, or actually I should say, you should do that only if you have basically a 0% chance of doing it, or not even consider it. Uh, and as, as you go down, get less and less danger, then you can increase the risk up to a point. Uh, that's actually pretty much it. I mean, like I said, the basic idea is low, uh, high risk, low danger first, build the skills, and then start to introduce situations where it's higher danger for you, but the risk is low because you've already built your skills. Um, so that's the entire idea. Barbells plus risk versus danger. Good combo.